ginger, knives, and fire. Hey everybody, welcome back to Draw Western Roundup. And today we are talking about the TV series from 1956, the Judge Roy Bean. Now I'm uh, joined here today by my friend Appalachian Allen, who is beating me in cards. But he's part of the Hooten Old Town Regulators, and that is the Cowboy Action Shooters. Cowboy Action Shooters. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what you do? Oh, uh, yeah, we're part of um, Putin Old Town Regulators in McKee, Kentucky. And as you said, we're part of the Single Action Shooting Society. Um, pretty much we promote the Old West and um, shoot actual guns and competition. Um, rifle, shotgun, pistols. Public's welcome and like to get new people involved all the time. Absolutely. Keep the old West alive. Keep that spirit going. Nice. Very nice. Very nice. Then they can find us on our website at bootonoldtown.com. Well, we want to say thank you for being a part of our show today. You said you did pretty good. I'm not going to ask. That'd be kind of rude. Yep. <laughs> but we're going to be watching uh, on this episode of Judge Roy Bean, The Fugitive, which is uh, episode 12. Got a couple of crooks posing as newspaper men who are trying to steal some land from a rancher. Well, we hope you enjoy it. And once again, welcome back to Draw Western Roundup. the wildest spot in the United States was the desolate region west of the Pecos River. Virtually beyond the reach of the authorities, the railroads, then pushing their way west, attracted the most vicious characters in the country. It was said that all civilization and law stopped at the east bank of the Pecos. It took one man, a lone storekeeper who was sick of the lawlessness, to change all this. His name was Judge Roy Bean. Shut my hand up. 
You know better than that. I only hit what I aim at. Uh, what do you want? I was riding into Langtree. I thought you might like to go along with me. For what? I want you to meet a friend of mine. I can't go to town. I got work to do. You know better than to say no when I ask you to do something. Now get on your horse. Judge Bean. You're looking at him. What can I do for you? My name's Dover. You got a great little town in the makings here, Judge. Great future. I'm glad you like it. Yes, sir, I think so. With the railroad coming through here, this community's going to grow, and I've decided I want to grow with it. Well, we're always glad to have good neighbors. I'd like to set up a tent and publish a newspaper. What do you say to that, Judge? Well, it sounds interesting, but I'm not so sure there's enough people around here to support a newspaper. <laughs> You let me worry about that. I have all the faith in the world in this little town. Hardly big enough to call a town yet. Well, it will be, and I expect to be part of its growth. I'd like to set up a tent somewhere along the street. I'll talk to you later about leasing or buying the land. What do you say? Well, I wouldn't want to stand in the way of progress. You want to take the gamble, that's up to you. <laughs> Thank you, Judge. I was sure you'd feel that way about it. Let's go, Hickey. Get up there! Get up! All right, Hickey, start unloading. Right now? Sure, we've got to get the tent set up before the old boy has a chance to change his mind. He won't change his mind, and I don't see why we have to do it this way. We have to do it this way to stay out of trouble. I don't know how many times I have to tell you. Now, let's get started. All right, all right. Some more coffee, Jeff? Please. Letty, Jeff. Yeah. Good news for you. Why, Uncle Roy? We're going to have a newspaper in town. A newspaper? Where? Right now. They're putting up a tent down the street. I've got to see this. Well, welcome, folks. You're just in time to see the new newspaper office go up. You're not going to put the tent up right here, are you? Why not? It's too far out in the street. What street? It stays right where it is. Sorry, mister. The tent's got to go back. I'll help you. Hold on, Jeff. Hold on. Hey, what's the idea? First day in town, you're disturbing the peace. Sorry, Judge. Hickey's a little hot-headed. It won't happen again. Yeah, well, I hope not. We like to get along friendly in this town. Come along, Jeff. I didn't know you were an artist, Judge. I mean, a sign painter. You didn't know I was a sign painter? I don't ever think I'm sure it's cheap to pull in teeth. <laughs> Hi, Jeff. Judge. Howdy. What are you doing in town? I thought you wanted to fix the south fence. I did, but a friend of mine showed up. Meet Joe Bob from Carson Bend. Judge Bean, Jeff Taggart. Howdy. How are you? All right, Connie, let's go. All right. I'll see you before I leave town. All right. Something funny there. Connolly isn't being himself. You know, I got the same feeling. Who is that friend of his? I never saw him before in my life. What is this? What does it look like? Get on off your horse. Well, here he 
Yes, it's Mr. Dover. Welcome to our new office, Mr. Conley. As you can see, progress has come to Langtree. The uh, boss said you wanted to see me. I do, I do. Yes, there's a great future here. Wonderful chance to make a lot of money. And we're going to let you in on the ground floor. Me? Yes, Mr. Conley, we're going to give you first chance to invest in this fine new business. But I couldn't invest in anything. I ain't got that kind of money. Take a look at this, Mr. Conley. Our first edition. As you can see, your name is rather prominent. My name? Yes, tell us all about you having killed a man named Conley in the Carson Bend Hotel six months ago. You ain't got any proof of this. You shared the room with Conley, didn't you? And ran out on the killing? You forget, Conley, I was there. Uh, this is blackmail, rank blackmail. Yes, and it also happens to be news, Mr. Conley. Of course, if you decide to buy into the business, you could have a great deal to say about what we publish. Buy into it? You can get an equal partnership for exactly $2,000. Yeah, but uh, I already told you, I, I ain't got that kind of money. I'm sure you can get it if you try, but you better hurry. Unless you want everybody around here to read that you're a fugitive killer. Weezer, old boy. Hi, Steve. Glad to see you back. Hello, Judge. Well, if it ain't the Texas Rangers. Hello, Jeff. Just talking to your brother outside. My brother? Yeah. Looking more like you every day. <laughs> he means Weezer. <laughs> That's all right, then. For a while, I was afraid I was beginning to look like you. Oh. <laughs> Betty, you're getting prettier every time I see you. Why, thank you, sir. Is that uh, food I smell? It sure is. Come on in and have some. I'll take you up on that, but I'll put my horse away first. Be right back. Oh, Judge, uh, uh, do you mind if I talk to you for a minute? Yeah, go ahead. Well, uh, I, I was wondering if you'd let me have some money. Sure, I'll let you have some money. What you need? Two thousand dollars. $2,000? $2,000? You know I don't keep that kind of money around, Conley. Five hundred's the best I can do. You're welcome to it if you can use it. Yeah, yeah sure, that's all right, Judge. Here you are. Sorry I haven't got more. Oh, that's okay, Judge. Uh, uh, you know, a business deal. Uh, a little business deal. Take you long to get back? It's $500. I'll take it. It's all I can get. How soon can you get the rest? That's all there is. I can't get it. Don't talk like that, Conley. You own a ranch, don't you? Yeah, and if you think you're going to get your hands on it, why... I'll be a reasonable man. You can sign over your ranch to me. Why are you... Now, oh. uh, look. Look, Conley, you better be sensible. You don't want everybody around here to know that you're a killer, do you? No, I guess not. I anticipated something like this, so I brought along a proper legal form. You can just sign it. We'll fill in the details later. Remember, Conley, you can hang for what you did back in Carson Bend. I tell you, no trouble. Everything legal. Let's take a ride out and look at Conley's spread. Why not?
Yeah. Yeah, Judge. I want you to do something. What's up? Come with me. Hi, Steve. Hi. Hi, Steve. You hungry? I'm so hungry I could eat a cold cow. I'll have something ready for you in a minute. Good, honey. search warrant for this. And if we do, I'll sign it tomorrow. Hey. Hey, what's wrong, Conley? Carson Van Killer sought. Tom Kiley shot and robbed. Kiley couldn't do that. He couldn't kill anybody. Just take it easy, son. Let's go back to the store. There's a few questions I want him to answer. Oh, I'll bet you say that to all the girls on your beat. Oh, I run into nothing but pretty girls when I travel around. Hey, Steve. Yeah, Judge. Do you know anything about killing up Carson Ben about six months ago? A killing? Yeah. Flip Kiley, the gambler. Who killed him? Well, we haven't been able to figure that out yet, Judge, but some pal who's running around with shot him three times in the back. That doesn't sound like Conley. Conley? You can't let her feelings decide this for us, Jeff. Hey, wait a minute. What's Conley got to do with it? I'm not sure. I think maybe you better bring him in, Jeff. Connolly wouldn't do it. I'd be willing to swear to it. Yeah, but you better bring him in anyway. Uh, Jeff. Jim, what's this all about? This thing about you killing a man in Carson Bend. Who told you that? We found out. What about it? How'd it happen? I don't rightly know. Me and Kylie, we did at the town for a couple of days, and we hold up in a hotel, same room. Well, there was some kind of commotion. I guess we had a fight. Anyway, the next time I saw him, he was dead. And you ran? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I got scared. Jim, I think we better have a talk with the judge. waiting for you, Judge. Well, finish your dinner, Steve. We'll take care of it. It was with Kylie the night he was killed. Says he doesn't remember anything. What about this man Dover, Jim? You ever seen him before? No, never. How about Barr? Yeah, I've known Barr for years. He, he was in Cousin Ben the night that I... Uh, the night that Kylie was killed. They've been using this to try to get money away from you? Yeah. I got my ranch, too. I think we better have a talk with this Dover. I'm afraid that wouldn't help Conley much. Jim, we're gonna have to put you in jail. Jail? You're gonna have to stand trial for this. Well, why put me in jail? I ain't going no place. Well, Jim, I can't feel that you, you could have killed that man. But you ran away, and that made it look awful bad for you. And if you run away this time, you're gonna be running away the rest of your life. Uh, don't put me in jail. I thought you were my friend. I am. I'm going to try to help you. But you got to do it this way. Come on, Jim. You ain't my friends. None of you are my friends. Go 
Sir, you're under arrest. Under arrest? What for? We're going to have a talk with the judge. That's what you think, mister. You're not arresting anybody. Hold it, Barr. I don't mind talking to the judge. Let's go, deputy. Here's Dover, Judge. What's the reason for this, Judge? You've been blackmailing Jim Conley. And now, those are hard words, Judge. My dealings with Conley have been on a strict business basis. He wanted to buy a piece of the newspaper, and you'll have a hard time trying to prove otherwise. Let me throw them all in jail, Judge. No, couldn't make a stick, Jeff. Well, if you'll excuse me, I have things to do. We're going to let him get away with this. I think that feller's got a pretty slick operation working for him. What are we going to do? We'll wait for a break. Well, everything worked out just as I said it would. Yes, it sure did. Now, how soon will we get out of here? Right away, as soon as I fill in the description and get this paper recorded. Okay, let's pick up and get going. Oh, no, wait a minute. Everything stays here just as it is. What do you mean? Just as I said, everything stays here. What are you talking about? Look, we made a business deal. The tent, the press, everything stays just as it is. Now, wait a minute, Dover. We can use this outfit again. All we have to do is get something on somebody, and we can work the same game. Look, Barr, I said everything stays here. The tent, sure, but we can get away with the press before they know it. But it isn't safe that way. You and your safety. Come on, Hickey, give me a hand with this. Go in a minute. I'm still not sure this is the right move. Forget it, will you? Come on. Going someplace? Yeah, we're going someplace. What about it? You're all under arrest. We tried that before. This time we're going to make it stick. On what charge? You're still talking about blackmail. I'm talking about a robbery. You was trying to get away with that printing press outside. Oh, that belongs to me. Half of that belongs to Jim Conley, and you know it. Oh, now wait a minute, Judge. These two are trying to steal it. I was just trying to stop them. That was all. You'll all right, we're getting out of here. You first. Gunshot. Now don't you try anything, because I can pick your eyes out with this. Come on.
mistake when you used this Derringer bar. We figure it belonged to Kylie. Just to refresh your memory, Kylie is a gambler you shot and killed and robbed in Carson Bend. You can't tell. Telling to me I bought that Derringer. I suppose you bought this watch, too. Now, that's got Kylie's initials on it, and I'm holding you for murder. Steve, lock him up. You're ready to take him away. Be a pleasure, Judge. Come on, Bar. What are you holding me for, Judge? I didn't have anything to do with that killing. You tried to swindle a man. You know you can't prove that. A deal's a deal. I'm going to hold Conley to it. What are you going to hold him with? With that document he signed. Let's see it. Well, uh... <laughs> I did. Can't find it, can you? No. You want to know why, Dover? Yes. Because it burned up in that fire. What? You ain't got nothing to hold him with. You can't take that away from me. I'm keeping it. You can't take it away from me legally anyway. That's so? Frisk him, Jack. It's empty your pockets. It's a waste of time. I never carry a gun. What's this? No gun. Nothing but a penknife. Well, now. I saw a man killed with a penknife what? once. This court fines you $500 for carrying a concealed weapon. Why, this is an outrage, an absolute outrage. $20 more for contempt of court. Jim, you're a free man. You got your property back, and I got my $500. You can't get away with this. I'll have the law on you. I am the law. Now, you take that wagon of yours and get out of town before I lock you up for vagrancy. Why, you... And I'll you... throw away the key. Now, get... That's my Uncle Roy. <laughs> yep, this court stands I can hear every steer, the sound of the thundering herd. It's so real, I can feel the warmth of a friend. I know I must go to the land of the Pecos, there to stay, there to stay.